The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks. Welcome to the Diagnostic Trading Out here. I am your host, Daryl Martin, and we uh, come here to learn how to minimize risk, maximize leverage, and be one step ahead of the markets. And uh, I'll do a quick uh, market wrap for you. We got the S&P up seven points. We got the Russell is up three. We have the NASDAQ up 17 and a half. We have the Dow up 77. Oil is up 11, 12, 13 cents on the day there. And um, pulling back off its highs. And we also have the natural gas is up uh, 0.068. And we got, look like we have gold, which is up 90 cents. We got silver up 20, uh, what's it? Wow, 0.209 cents there. So a nice little move. And we got gold up 90 cents um, after uh, being all the way up to 1675.1. So pulled a couple bucks off the high. And then looking over at our currencies, the pound, euro, Aussie, all those uh, pulling back down after their big run-up yesterday. And uh, just going ahead and looking at we did a couple uh, trades this morning on the bull bear binary hour. And I wanted to review those with you and uh, let you see sort of uh, how they're playing out right now. Okay? So we're on the bull bear binary hour. By the way, if you don't already have an account, you can uh, definitely uh, get an account with Nadex and check it out. And what you'll need to do is simply go to tfnn.com, click on Nadex, and click on Create Account. And uh, you click uh, Start right there. It'll automatically uh, let you go ahead and open a live account with $100 to fund it and start trading. Um, you know, obviously, uh, a lot of people put in more than that, $500, $1,000, you know, or, you know, I recommend, you know, putting in a couple grand. But you can actually start trading with just $100 in the account. And then uh, if you want to test drive, let's say so, uh, you want to try it out and just sort of figure it out, see how it works. And, uh, of course, you before you live trade, you definitely want to test drive out anything um more for the matter of just learning the mechanics of the trade the strategy and we talked about uh this week we talked about strategy system and style strategy being you know buying a call buying you know buying a put selling a call selling a put covered calls hedges um straddle strangles you know whatever it is that you're doing that's the strategy okay but the system is your rules for entry and exit you want to learn the strategy the mechanics how to play it it's like if you're learning to play a new card game um texas hold'em right so me being from Texas, going how to play Texas Hold'em, you want to learn it with uh, fake money. Um, not that that's going to make you a good poker player, but it's going to make it where at least you know the rules. All right? So learn the rules. Learn how to hit the button so you're not hitting the wrong button at the wrong time. And so you can react when you're ready uh, to make a move. And just click on open a demo account. And then what you can do is you can put in your uh, demo username, first name, last name, phone number, and email address. And that will allow you to automatically uh, get an account. It literally takes about 15 seconds. And if you have any questions, you can always call in. We got our number right here on the homepage of TFNN. It's 877 927 6648. Or I'll call in internationally, 727 445 1044. And again, one more time for you on that U.S. number, 877 927 6648. And if you haven't already, definitely check out uh, TFNN.MOBI. And you can uh, listen to us on the go from anywhere in the world uh, with your mobile phone. And again, that's tiffinin.mobi. So once you've done that, then uh, you'll need to log in to your account at Nadex to be able to trade on the Nadex exchange. And uh, so I'll log in right here. I'll pull it up. And uh, we'll see sort of how the spreads look and uh, follow along. And uh, Steve placed this trade, and I'll just sort of do an analysis on where the trade is at if you followed along on that trade this morning. All right, so I've got my account. I'm in. And this is Friday. Friday, uh, basically, you know, less volatile Fridays. And so uh, whenever I'm looking at deviation levels on Fridays, I'm usually looking at half of the implied deviation. And I don't use, you know, your regular uh, standard deviations that look at historical volatility. I use an implied deviation number. And that uh, allows me to basically see what does the market expect, not what what's happened. What does the market expect? Um, for the market to move, say, within, you know, one day, okay, within 24 hours. And that comes from using implied volatility versus simply at looking even at, we don't even really look at historical prices, 
We look at it, the implied volatility and the options, factor that in to a nice, long, complicated formula. And uh, basically it shows us, you know, the expectation built into the premium and options for a one-day move. And uh, it's very helpful. It's very accurate. And uh, so right here, I got a couple lines plotted on just the S&P. And you can see that uh, the 50% move, like I said, that's our first goal there, was right around 1406, 1407. And um, so as soon as we hit that number, you can see the market just, you know, went flat. It started going up and down, hadn't done a whole lot. We do go ahead and make that rise on up. Then we'd be looking at a rise up to about 1413. That would actually be the goal for the day. Okay, so that's the, we're going to close on a high note. Then that's about what we are looking for. That's what we're expecting. Anything above that, hey, that's gravy. But uh, we shouldn't really have any expectation greater than 1413. And as far as, you know, right now, if you were in the trade, this would be an area where you'd be looking to start taking some profits um, or at least tightening your stops up. And uh, as you can see, see, just that slowdown that did definitely occur. And um, right here, if I go in, I'm going to I said, pull up the trades, and I'll sure to show you what we looked at this morning. And what we did is I pulled up, and I logged in, I went to the indices bull spreads, and we went over to US 500. After that, we went over to the daily 400s, and we did what's called a straddle. And the price when we put the trade on this morning was right around 9 o'clock, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern there. And the market was hovering right around, you know, 1400, sort of back and forth. And uh, right between 9 and 9.30. So, was, I mean, it literally is right during this time frame. And so when we did that, we straddled it. So if it was around 1400, we were looking at the 1400 to 1440 versus the 1400 down to 1360. And so pull them both up and I'll open both tickets and then sort of show you how that would be panning out right now on the trade. All right. So we went in and I want to say it was 10 contracts on both sides. And then the uh, buy price was around 13.90, or the sell price was around 13.98. And the buy price, and then the sell, what we did is we get sold the 1400 to 13.60. I'll reverse these around here. Sometimes I'll make it easier. Um, so, so we sold the 1400 down to 13.60. So a lot of profit potential built in there. And on the buy side, we bought around 14.02. Okay. And that gave us basically a $400 uh, total risk on the trade, and meaning we need to make basically four points in profit, all right, to be at, you know, we need to, or make two points in profit to be at break even on one side or the other. So as soon as we were at 1404, we actually started making money, okay? And what you can do right now is actually show you um, how you can calculate the profit. So if we were to sell out on the long side, there'd be no reason to, um, buy back the short. You actually can't even buy it because nobody's willing to really uh, hop in there. With no, there's no good reason to buy uh, a spread that's that low because there's no profit to be made on the one that's 1400 to 1360. So you wouldn't buy that one at all. Uh, so you just leave it there. Hey, if the market reverses back, great. You may make some money on that side. Okay. But on this side, let's go ahead and look at it. Let's say we sold out right now, market being at 1407.7. All right. And then minus 1402. That's a 5.7 profit. Okay, so that's 5.7. Nadex ticks in. Uh, very simple. Uh, the last digit is the tick. And so on the US 500, it's ticking in 0.1. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Every tick is worth a dollar. So if I have 5.7 points, um, the easy thing that I do is I just drop the decimal. 57. So that's 57 ticks, 57 dollars in profit per spread, and we did 10 spreads. So right now, we're up $570 on one side of the trade. And uh, obviously, we're down $200 on the other side of the trade there. And again, that's profit, all right? So we have more than doubled our investment um, since around 9.30 this morning of $400. And uh, if we go in, basically doubled our money there. And we went in with 400 so 400 that we put in. And we're going to lose 200 on one side, right? So we got 570, and then we'll just go ahead and take off the 200 on the other side. Assume that one's a loss. We're up 370 total, which puts us right at about a one-to-one -one, um, reward risk ratio if we sold out right now. And uh, if it keeps going up, then of course there's a little more that could be made right there. But you could easily close out this trade. This would not be a bad place to close out the trade. And uh, like I said, you would have basically doubled your risk, uh, you know, one-to-one -one, or doubled your uh, return of investment. So. You doubled your money. You had 400. Now you have, you know, a little more than that. 
And so you, you have se- basically a 770 right now. And if you, like I said, if it goes up just a little bit more, but you know, I wouldn't be counting on it. We're at that one standard deviation. Uh, what I definitely would do, let's say you want to go ahead and let it ride out through the end of the day. Don't give back your profits. You have money, okay? So what you can do is you could close out, say, half of your position right now. And by closing out half of your position, then you're locking in profits, okay? And if we have 370 bucks, we close out half, then that covers what? Basically, that covers the other $100 is at risk on the long side and the $200 that's at risk on the other side. So, again, you could go in and close out half your position or the other option is I'd set a stop. And so I basically have a stop right here around 1405. If the market came back down to that price, I'd be looking to get out of the trade. So that way I covered all of my risk on the trade. If it does reverse and go back down, then I don't end up losing on the trade because there's nothing worse. <laughs> nothing. One of, the, one of the most frustrating things in trading, right, is having a winner turn into a loser. And so you got to have a profit management plan. All right. And uh, it's not simply, you know, what you make, it's what you keep. And it's not what you win, it's what you don't lose, okay? So, um, you know, keep your risk management in check by keeping your profit management in check. And um, Nadex helps you with the risk management because it caps your risk. It doesn't matter what happens here on the long side, the most risk is 200. On the short side, the most risk is 200. And so, you know, with that in play, knowing that my risk is taken care of as far as I can't lose more than a certain amount of money, now I want to make sure that whatever I do, I, you know, protect that capital, all right? So if I know I'm up, I do want to, you know, make sure that I don't give it all back. Because if it goes back to 1400 and just flattens out right there, and I don't close out, then I lose $400. And right now, I'm up, you know, $370 on the trade. So, you know, that would be uh, not a good thing. And, you know, I, I could be okay with only making a couple hundred dollars on it. Like I say, if it comes back and uh, give some of that profit back, uh, that's not my ideal thing. But, you know, it's one of those things, do I want to go ahead and take the 370 profit and book it? Or um, do I want to risk a couple hundred bucks of that and see if I can make maybe, you know, a few hundred more dollars on the trade? If it goes up to 14, 13, then I'm looking at making basically about 500 more dollars. So I, you make a lot more money on the trade. If it actually moves up, you could double, more than double your return there um, on the profits that you already have. And 500 plus three, about $800. So you would actually double your return on your risk which is great. I love to have trades where my goal is to make twice what I'm risking. And if that's a realistic goal, which it is in this trade, if that's my goal and that's a, a available as a possibility, then that's good because if I you know, win double what I'm risking, then I could lose two out of three times and be break even. Okay, so you could be a really bad trader and again, lose two out of three times and you're break even on the trade. So uh, hold right there, folks. We'll be right back after the commercial break. Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers, where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs, these newer issues issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, David White, Larry Pesamento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right, folks. Welcome back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And um, uh, another trade to look at here. Uh, Corn had a nice uh, long short, or not long, but uh, been going for a while. Uh, short trade in here on the corn market. And uh, so we're getting right near the deviation level on that. And uh, the, the full deviation on corn for the day is actually at 799.75. And we would have got one tick off of that. It pulled back, going back down. And um, at this point, you know, I'm definitely looking to uh, book some profits on that trade. And so, you know, if, like, if you're in corn, this might be where you want to either tighten your stops or uh, grab some profits or maybe a little bit of both. And... So to do that, you know, just make sure uh, always uh, be using a good risk reward management in there. And so at this point, you know, go ahead and put at least one stop in the market, um, and to uh, tighten that up to you know buy stop. And then I'm going to set my other one right up here, up at 805. And uh, that's just going to give me a little bit of room so my other one can run. And it uh, puts a little bit of money at risk, you know, so a couple hundred dollars of profit there um, at risk. But you know, we got a, sh a very uh, nice trade. Um, entered, you know, pretty high on the trade. Is up at, uh, I want to say, 8.23. And uh, go back here. Holding on to this one. And, yeah, right over here. So, um, anyway, got short on that trade right there. And, you know, you just you want to make sure that, you know, you're taking advantage of every possible opportunity. And uh, so we got out of one right there. And, uh, like I said, I just want to tighten that stop up really good. And we got one left. And we're going to lead that stop in or uh, go flat here at the end of the day. 
up at 805 if it can uh, break that. And I'll keep watching that one right there. But, uh, you know, just definitely be watching, you know, the charts, making sure you have those profit goals because it is so easy to give that money back. And you don't want to be giving the money back. Uh, you want to be, uh, anytime you're making it, you want to be keeping it. And uh, just don't let it, uh, you know, leak out of your pocket there. So, um, so now let's go ahead and uh, look at a few other things that are going on. And, you know, we can uh, pull some standard deviation levels here. In uh, the next segment, I'll go through and I'll start walking through some different markets to see, you know, what are we looking at on each market and uh, where it is headed. And so I'll pull those up right now on the uh, just the fundamental news. So we did a little bit of, you know, talking about some statistics and, you know, we're looking at a little bit of technical analysis there, things that are trending down. And now heading over on the fundamental side, um, we had the core durable good orders came in, and uh, obviously that was not a uh, good number um, when it came in this morning. Had a bit of an impact here um, on the S&P, but not a substantial one. It came out at uh, 7.30 and uh, Central and, uh, you know, came in. Basically knocked the market down a little bit, but market really wasn't uh, too overwhelmed by it. Decided to do a little bit of a pullback on the day. So uh, we'll see how that ends out. And a Kerbal, uh, core, a little, uh, <laughs> core durable good orders. Um, you know, what does that mean? Okay. That's basically, they look at month over month. They're expecting 0.5%. They got negative 0.4. It's basically missing expectations um, for the last several months and hasn't hit a whole lot of the expectations at all um, really this year. This year, it's actually only, it's met expectations once. It's exceeded it once. And um, every other month of the year, it's actually, so the other five months out of the year so far, it's actually missed expectations. And what it is, is the change. Um, it comes out by the Census Bureau. And it's a change in the total value of new purchase orders that were placed with manufacturers for, you know, durable goods. And if that report comes in good, then that's, of course, you know, good for the market. If it goes in lower, then that means that things are slowing down, okay? Um, and it's a very volatile, you know, thing. And so you just want to look at a lot of things. Things like aircrafts, um, purchases and stuff can sort of mess the data up. And so you definitely want to get in there um, to get a good, you know, durable order census. But... You do want to make sure that the core data is really a, a really good gauge uh, for you seeing like future economic output because it's how much money are they spending, and it's a it's really a leading indicator. You don't want those lagging indicators, right? This is a leading indicator on production. So when they're going to be making new things, they're of course putting in these orders, and um, as orders go up, that means manufacturers are looking at producing and increasing their activity, and uh, so it's just you know it's a good sign. And basically, right now the quarter orders are going down, and they've been trend. They've been going down. We actually had um, it's a little bit better than I guess you could say last last month. It was negative one point one percent from the previous, but uh, this month it's negative four, so negative point four, and um, so it helps to be a little bit less negative, I guess you could say, whenever uh, <laughs> you know it was so bad last month. But I mean, it, it's, it's trended down that since it being negative point four. And uh, the other announcement, we had the dur durable goods. That's not, again, as important of a number uh, because it doesn't uh, factor in as much of the stuff. So that came in better than expected. But, you know, overall, the core durable goods is going to win, you know, between the core durable goods and the durable good orders that came out this morning. So always, when you're seeing those two side by side, be watching the core durable good orders, not so much the durable good orders. If they're both bad, that's bad all the way around, but always lean towards the core. All right, we'll be right back after this commercial break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Tom O'Brien's daily trading newsletter, Market Insights, has delivered powerful results for subscribers, and now is the perfect time to try it out for two weeks absolutely free. We're so confident in the value Tom provides his subscribers in his daily newsletter that through Labor Day weekend only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system, completely free of charge, will even cover the shipping cost. Cancel at any time during your two-week free free trial to market insights and pay nothing and keep tom's free book as a gift from us this offer is only valid for new subscribers we've only extended this offer once before and it will only be active for a short period of two weeks so act now to take advantage of this great offer and be ready to capitalize on a more active more volatile market once traders return from their august vacations all the details are on the front page of tfnn.com sign up for your free trial to get your free copy of tom's best-selling book today if you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney Financial Advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, First Vice President and Certified Financial Planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Uh, we were wrapping up last time. Uh, we said uh, definitely we're setting our stops over here on ES. And um, right here around 14.05, 14.06. And uh, you want to have that in there. And our goal is, if it keeps going, to move on up to 14.13. That would definitely be the uh, take profit goal that we'd be looking at. And I expect that it'll uh, hit another bump right there right at 14.10. But uh, 14, 13 is sort of like the max we're looking for. That's a one standard deviation move on the day. And uh, so let's see here what else we got open. We got our pound trade. Uh, it's still going. It's doing all right. And we got our corn trade on. And um, so that one's still uh, we got our stop in so that way we can protect it in case it decides to uh, continue to uh, move back up. But right now it's a looking pretty solid move to the downside. So if that one continues. Lock in a nice profit on that trade as well. And uh, just keep things going. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, check out uh, what's coming up in the coming week on the market. And on the ES, we did a straddle trade. If uh, you missed the first part of the show there, that came in this morning when we had the bull bear binary hour. And um, Steve basically just said, hey, it's going to, you know, market's going to break one way or the other. And uh, he was pretty, you know, expecting a good move today. And so we went ahead and we put a straddle on to basically not have to be directional, but definitely expect a move right off of that level. And uh, just in case it decides to come back and settle, at 1400, we want to leave those stops in. So now what do we got coming up on the agenda for next week? Well, next week, uh, we have several things coming up and a big one coming out on Friday. 
the or actually I guess it starts Thursday and uh, there will be a bank holiday in Britain on Monday by the way so keep that one in your uh, roster okay uh, that's obviously going to affect trading volume and uh, affect the pound dollar um, unless there's some crazy news out or something but beyond that uh, bank holiday in Britain on Monday all right a lot of people you know off work all that fun stuff and um, they're basically it's just a, a summer bank holiday and then over here, uh, they'll have, a, and by the way, you know, a lot of people go, you know, how does that work? How does that affect things? Um, the liquidity will go down. Um, the volatility will be off. All right. And, um, you know, Forex Break is, of course, going to be open. So you can trade Forex because, uh, you know, they do a lot of that stuff. But anyways, the big thing is when, you know, a bank is closed, things become less liquid. So that's going to affect, you know, all the, you know, the European markets. Uh, it's going to affect the pound. It's going to, you know, have a bit of an effect on the euro as well. Um, but, you know, just like I said, I always like to keep you aware of all the fundamental announcements coming out that have a big impact. The other one is we're going to have um, another FOMC member conversation happening. So that's going to come out at 11.15 Central, 12.15 Eastern. And that's going to be uh, Planalto or, you know, however you say the name there. And uh, he's going to come out and make a little speech. And, uh, of course, everybody's going to be looking at that to see what is the FOMC going to do on QE. And, uh, you know, I talked about this a little bit this morning and this week. Um, you know, everybody's so wound up in QE. What's really interesting to me is I went back and I looked at all the Fed funds raised because I thought this was the case, but I just want to make sure. I looked at all them back to 2009. That's the easy data I could access. Every Fed funds rate has been announced on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, okay, um, like since 2009. And, you know, with all these Q announcements, everything, all that's Tuesday, Wednesday. Well, what's really interesting is this one's on a Thursday, um, the, the one that's going to be coming up on the 13th. And uh, why is it on a Thursday? Why is it on a Tuesday or a Wednesday? All right, just, you know, why would they make it a different day of the week? Well, on Wednesday, uh, September 12th, there is going to be a, a big announcement. German Supreme Court is going to be ruling on basically the constitutionality of the uh, whether or not they're going to put a you know further lockdown or they're going to you know put an injunction basically on the ruling on whether or not uh, the European stability mechanism is constitutional or not, and that if they say hey no further injunction whatever, well that's going to be very positive news and can sort of let uh, Berdaki skate by without having to go in and pass on um, doing anything else such as, you know, QE because, you know, he doesn't want to be the one that's called the guy who caused hyperinflation in the history books. But at the same time, he does also want to be the guy that caused the entire market to crash. Okay? And now what we got going on is, so it, basically if that announcement comes out and let's say they're putting an injunction on it and that's seen as very negative and he's like, you know what? If they're going to be putting this off till 2013, I got to do something now. And so now I have a reason to do QE. So basically, he gets to use that whatever happens at that announcement can be his reason for either doing or not doing QE. So um, I'm sure they'll have they already have their mind made up and you know their conversations and you know all the votes have to go through and everything else. But at the end of the day, why else would they move it back a day? And so it's just a really I just found that to be an interesting thing. And uh, But, yeah, the guy that's uh, going to be speaking on, let's see here, like I said, on Monday at 11.15 Central, 12.15 Eastern, just keep that in your trading books because you want to know when those things are going on because, of course, they can definitely uh, move the markets as people pay attention to, you know, all their little words and everything else. And he's been a voting member um, for the last, I guess, four uh, terms, so 06, 08, 010, 012. So he is definitely, you know, somebody you want to be paying attention to. And he's the uh, Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland, um, you know, source on that. So if you ever want to, if you want to check out the release, then that would be where you'd want to just Google Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. Um, and what do we got coming out on Tuesday? All right. So on Tuesday, and I'm just looking over the uh, European announcements here, nothing uh, major um, on the European stuff. We do have the uh, consumer confidence report coming out at 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern. So that is definitely going to be a good one you want to have on your list there for Tuesday, August 28th. And uh, looking right here, basically they survey 5,000 households, and they're going to ask the respondents to rate uh, basically what they think about the economy. So it's just, you know, it's a little bit of a leading indicator, um, but it does have a pretty uh, decent impact on the market. So it can uh, be a good place to trade, a good place to tighten stops if you're in a positive trade, 
Uh, <laughs> that's also if you're going to losing trades, it don't get worse. But um, so definitely right there. And then hopping on over and looking out. You know, there's a couple other things coming out that day, but like the S&P Composite HPI and the Richmond Manufacturing, but those really are not high-impact trades. And then looking over at Wednesday, we are going to have the preliminary GDP, okay? And um, so that preliminary GDP is going to be coming out, and uh, you want to keep that one. Definitely, that's that's a high number on the list, and that can have, you know, a big, big uh, impact on the market. So that will be one of the things the Fed Fund, you know, will be able to sort of look at on their forecast. Um, and they're expecting 1.7% on that. Um, pending home sales will come out a little bit later. And that'll come out at 9 a.m. on Wednesday. And so just, you know, what sort of home sales are in the process. That's basically going to be it for the books on Wednesday. But then Thursday, we'll start off at 7.30 with the unemployment claims. But basically all day, you know, the Jackson Hole Symposium happening in Wyoming. And uh, basically Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And that's where all the big finance ministers and the central bakers and the academians and all the financial market gurus um, you know, as far as, you know, the, the guys that make the decisions are all going to come together. They're going to have their closed door meeting, no press allowed, uh, but they'll come out and they'll make comments. Well, Bernanke obviously going to be making comments. And so that is going to be the biggest impact on the market right there next week because everybody's trying to guess what he's going to do for QE. And uh, again, that starts on Thursday. It goes on Friday. So that can cause some definite volatility on Friday as well. Um, we'll have a couple other numbers coming out, but uh, Bernanke's big speech is going to be happening on Friday of next week, okay? And that's scheduled for 9 a.m. Central, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. And uh, so he'll basically come out and he'll deliver a speech, and he's going to call it Monetary Policy Since the Crisis. And uh, that's that's the actual title for his speech. And you can just go over to the Federal Reserve website if you want to um, to you know check out the latest release on that. But you know right here is uh, federalreserve.gov. It's not federal. They have Reserve, but that's the name, Federal Reserve. So, federalreserve.gov. And uh, you can check out that speech. But again, that's 9 a.m. Um, Central, 10 a.m. Eastern. And then we'll also have Chicago PMI um, coming out as well uh, a little bit earlier that morning. And uh, so, you know, that'll have some impact. And Saturday, okay, going into the weekend, so be careful, you're going to have uh, Mr. ECB President Draghi is going to be speaking. And, um, of course, the uh, Jackson Hole Symposium will keep going. All right, and there's going to be this big uh, panel discussion on uh, the global policy perspectives, and uh, they're going to be having this actually at the Federal Reserve Bank in Kansas City. Uh, so, you know, you, you want to get in there, you want to check that out, and they'll be putting that release out. But he's going to make his whole little, you know, another speech. And uh, so that, of course, is going to be some sort of everything's positive, everything's wonderful, um, and we're going to do anything we can once we can do something. But... Uh, a lot of heat coming up, I know, on um, Greece, and we even had the uh, president over there of you know, Germany say, hey, you know what, um, we're okay if Greece leaves. And Finland wants Greece out, and uh, Denmark wants Greece out. And so that uh, probability of, you know, I told you about a few weeks ago, about 80-90% of a Greek exit in the last quarter of the year, first quarter of next year, is becoming larger and larger and larger, because really they basically said it's like in, being in sinking sand. And uh, yeah, there's just there's nothing they can put as much as they want into it. They can struggle all they want, but it's just going to keep sinking and sinking and sinking. So they don't see it as being recently able to get itself out. So and uh, there's just you know they don't want to keep pumping money into something that they don't see coming out for who knows how long. So uh, expect that one to be uh, obviously weighing on the markets there. And um, let's see here. So we go back over. We'll check out our corn position. It's still just hanging out. So a uh, quiet part of the market, but we are ticking up piece by piece. And um, so we're almost a few ticks away. And uh, we can go over and let's check out that Nadex position. That, uh, you know, where would it be right now? Okay. So on the Nadex position, up at 1409.7. All right. So if we got in 1409.7, we bought them at 1402. 7.7 .7 or 77 ticks on those 77 ticks he got there we uh, would be up on 10 contracts at 770 dollars minus the 200 on the other side so we're at 570 on a 400 dollar risk and investment right now as the trade stands and um, if you haven't taken off half maybe you want to take off half now or just keep trailing that stop and um, you know moving it on up so you're not giving it back 
But uh, the market is just quietly, slowly, just moving step by step right up. And uh, maybe we'll hit that 14, 13 number and, uh, for the day. And I'd definitely be taking off a good chunk of it at that point, if not all of it, uh, once we get up to 14, 13. But you could, uh, you could leave a few on it to see how it goes and, uh, you know, write it out. And so we got that one wrapped up. And uh, one of the other things I wanted to check out for you was I wanted to look over here and just go into some of the standard deviation numbers because that's uh, one of the big things um, that we like to focus on is standard deviation. So on standard deviation, um, and yeah, definitely uh, going short corn right now. I'm keeping that tight, very tight. But the news is out on corn. Um, I know one of the people to make some comments about uh, Tiger's Den and – the news is out there. Everybody knows. Okay, it's done, and um, so now it's okay. Yeah, the expectation is going to be high, but I mean, the thing has you know basically doubled. And uh, could it keep going up? Yeah, it definitely could keep going up. But it's all happening right now, and yeah, I mean, stocks are still moving. So uh, keep riding those stock markets on up. And if I look over right now at the deviation levels, and I'll go over the major indices for you right here. Okay. Um, the highest deviation level we're expecting is, like I said, right around 1412 um, point, really 1413 for the E mini. And on the Russell, we're looking at a uh, basically 8, almost 814, 81380. And on the NASDAQ, we're looking at a uh, standard deviation move um, as high as 2800 would be about the high that we would expect on the NASDAQ if it were to, you know, start running up over there. But I, just, I don't really see that happening on that side. For some reason, it's really just not uh, making its big move today. And uh, so, anyways, but if it does decide to, you know, run on up, then we got that. But on the S&P, I mean, it's, it's taken off. And we can uh, check out also over here on the advanced decline. You can see right here the stock shares are, not only were they moving up, even at that pullback now, I mean, they're trending right back up. But there's not that many more shares than what were going up earlier. Just starting to break that new high on the advanced decline ratio. And the advanced decline is a broad market index. You definitely want this indicator. Um, you can get it on a lot of major platforms. And really what it is, is taking the total shares on the New York Stock Exchange, and it's adding the ones that are up for the day, and it's subtracting the ones that are down for the day. Okay, sort of like a tick or a trend, but um, just really up or down for the day. And so by adding and subtracting all those together, then you know right now it shows a positive, what, nine... 91 and before we were up at 988 so uh, definitely that's trending up and it just shows you a broad market and there is one like on the Dow and the S&P and the Russell but um, I personally and I know most traders that I know um, really like looking at the broad market index and it is an intraday you're not really looking at it from previous day because it's on the day so don't look at it and go okay well how can I look at this in the past um, you're really looking at it intraday and you can't look at historical data and compare you know how it's done but I mean it, it makes a very good solid uh, trend line and then going on over and looking at a couple other things. Let's see here. Uh, check out what we got going on on the Dow. And let me pull up. Yeah, look at that. Just, oof, it's flying up there. I'll wrap up a last couple of indexes for you before we wrap up. But it looks like the uh, Dow is past its marker and is moving on possibly to the next level. Stay right there, and we'll wrap up on the other indices for you. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now Catch Tom O'Brien and Steve Rhodes as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. The Money Masters, next on TFNN. All right, welcome on back over here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour here with Daryl Martin. And uh, we're going to wrap up a few things before we uh, close out the show. And um, so we got our core and trade, and again, it's pulling back. So uh, we got to be careful on that one. That's why we have that uh, tight stop in there to lock in those profits. And uh, locked in quite a bit already today, so we'll just uh, keep it going. But uh, right here, we're looking at all of the major indices, okay? We got uh, 1413 on the S&P um, E-mini futures, the September contract there. We're looking at 809 on the Russell. We're looking at 2814 on the E-mini NASDAQ, and we're looking at uh, mini Dow at 13,257. So that would be a full uh, deviation there. And um, if we want to go a little bit lower, again, that's 13,148. So it's already hit the one standard deviation. And then again, that's 2787 over here on the NASDAQ. And uh, looks like we got a uh, caller on the line. So awesome. Uh, Steven, how you doing? Okay, good. I just had a quick question about that uh, straddle you put on the ES. Yeah. Um, um, let's say, for example, if we'd gotten stuck at about the 1400 level, so both legs were uh, losing, would it, at the end of the day, um, would it make sense to try to recover those losses to maybe uh, like uh, sell a 15 binary and buy uh, like an 85 binary uh, to kind of cancel out those losses? Yeah, basically you say to collect the premium near the end of the day because like when it goes flat, like in the last hour, if, it, if you're thinking it's going to go flat. Yeah, instead of exiting the spread, just to do that, and then you kind of like neutralize some of the losses. Yeah, 
Yeah, that, definitely. Uh, there's two different ways to hedge with the spreads, and um, one of them is, of course, to like if, if you're going just long versus doing a straddle to you know get a spread in the opposite direction. Um, and then the other one, like right now, would be a great place if you want to put a spread on like short, okay, um, just in case the market decided to give it all back at the end of the day, which completely possible. Um, and so you can go down for like that 1400 level. Um, and then the you know the other thing is on the other one, just like you said, like it gets to that level and it goes back down, and goes flat on you. Then yeah, you could definitely sell uh, binaries in order to uh, bring in some additional profit to cover your risk. So or you, you'd buy premium the, collection. Yeah, like buy the eighty five and sell the fifteen. Yeah, exactly. Uh huh. Is there is there a preference you have for one or the other of those strategies? I mean, you, like you say, you could reverse the straddle. Yeah. Um, yeah, you could reverse the straddle out. The, the big thing is um, you just want to make sure that you have some solid levels in whenever you're going for the uh, premium collection. Premium collection, you can make a lot of money on premium collection um, in the sense of, like, cause consistently because the probabilities are in your favor. Um, but, but your the, culture is big. Exactly. And so it's, it, and that's one of the things. Just like in any kind of risk management, the higher the probability, the more risk you're willing to take for a lower return. Right. Mm-hmm. Um and so, I mean, if you just think about that, I mean, like, people buy, you know, U.S. government bonds because they have a high probability, so they'll take in, like, almost nothing as a return, you know, right? Uh, because they see it as a safe investment, um, even though it's, I mean, it's fake money <laughs> you know, at the end of the day. Right. Um, so, you know, they, they expect to get paid. So you expect to get paid, yeah, you can go in and do the premium collection. Just you got to be really careful, and you got to be consistent, too, um, have, like, consistent rules, because some guys go in there like, I'm going to do premium collection. They'll do it, like, a day here, a day there, you know. And you get, if you're not bringing that money in day after day after day on premium collection, you need you need the odds to be in your favor. So when you do get that hit, and the number one rule on uh, if you're selling the premium that I tell people, never take the full hit. Okay, just like if you're doing like I say, a, you know, an iron albatross, iron condor type trade, don't take the full hit. And, Unless um, you're running into the end of the day, and then yeah, well, the yeah, expire. yeah. Oh no, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, just don't take the full because well, you're not going to expire if you take take the full hit. But um, it basically, if it gets like basically at the money, right. I want to get out of the trade. 50, if it goes back to fifty, exit. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. yep. so that makes okay. it where you you know couple, as long as you're winning you know a couple of them, then you're you're break even out of two out of three type thing. Sure. So okay, thanks. Awesome, great things. Yeah, thank you. All right, bye. You bet. Thank you. Talk to you later. All right. Well, everybody, um, have a great day. Have a great weekend, and we will be seeing you next week. Everything coming off those highs, so be careful. We'll get that right off those standard deviation levels. Have a great day.